morning everybody and welcome to UWC Law Faculty's Open Day. I am Sherith Sanger and I am a lecturer in the law faculty. I lecture criminal law and I lecture introduction to advocacy as well as a few other electives in which I guest lecture. Um, I'm based in the Department of Criminal Justice and Procedure in the faculty. So today I would just like to tell you a little bit about the law faculty and to tell you a little bit about what the law faculty can offer you if you choose to study at UWC. I am a UWC law, fa law faculty alumni. I studied my undergraduate law degree, my LLB degree at UWC law faculty. And this degree has definitely put me in good stead for my entire career. I am now back at UWC as a lecturer, but before becoming a lecturer, I was involved in and worked in various different places or various different parts of the legal profession. And then I will tell you a little bit about that later on when I explain more about what this LLB degree has done for me. Before I get to that, I want to talk a little bit about the LLB degree itself and what it offers. I will also talk about some of the other streams for law degrees. The primary degree within the fac faculty currently offers is the undergraduate LLB degree. LLB stands for Bacularis Legum. That means that it is a Bachelor's of Law degree. So as I said, this is an undergraduate qualification and it is essentially a pure law degree. By that I mean that there is very, very little non-legal modules that students need to complete with this LLB degree. In fact, students only do two non-legal subjects in the first year of study. This LLB degree serves as a basic requirement for admission to practice um, as a legal practitioner after all of the requirements have been fulfilled to practice as a legal practitioner. Of course, besides the academic qualification, the LLB, um, an applicant, somebody who wants to apply to become a legal practitioner to practice as such in South Africa, will also need to complete articles or complete law school and then make an application to be admitted. But this LLB degree is the basic requirement from an academic perspective that would be required for practice. For this LLB degree, uh, the law faculty offers two streams, a four-year and then a five-year degree program. The five-year degree program is for students who don't meet the basic requirements for the four-year program. Irrespective of it being a longer degree, one year longer, it is still the same qualification. And in fact, we have seen that the five-year degree program has produced some of the best students that the law faculty um, can celebrate or showcase. So the five-year program and the four-year program, it's, it's the same qualification. The five-year program just means that the degree is done over a longer period of time. So this degree, what does this LLB degree do for our law students? Well, it, do, it basically gives law students the the basis or the foundations of law. Um, it teaches substantive and procedural law modules which are essential for practice or which are essential in any part of the legal profession. In other words, in any career that a, a law graduate would decide to follow. So it is it gives a solid foundation. It gives students a, a basis or a grounding or a good understanding of the various areas of law that students need to know about, that they need to be able to grasp and understand in order to go out and work in those particular areas, be it in practice or in other non-practice legal professions, which I will, or legal careers, which I'll talk about in more detail a little bit later as well. So the only option so it's basic law subjects that the student that students need to take in the first three years in the fourth year there is a combination of compulsory courses but then of course also electives so I'm using the words interchangeably elect, um, courses and modules so just know that I mean the same thing but elective options that is what is offered to students in the fourth year of study. This is where students get to choose what they want to learn more about, or what they want a little bit more specialist or detailed knowledge in. Um, for example, is it um, advanced criminal law, advanced civil procedure? Um, is it 
a, a course that specifically focuses on the Constitution, for example, or specifically focuses, for example, advanced family law in the area of private law. So it's only in the fourth year when students are able to choose electives. It's also important for me to say that besides the, the LLB degree, the, the, the law faculty will be reintroducing the BA law degree. And what the BA law degree is that it essentially is a graduate LLB degree. So it's different from the LLB that is the four-year or the five-year stream in that the student first does a BA undergrad and then has an undergraduate LLB degree. This will be reintroduced. It was offered by the faculty before, many years ago, I think prior to 1998, but it will be reintroduced. So students will have an option as to whether they want to do the BA and then postgraduate LLB option. The law faculty also has the BCom law degree, where we see students doing a combination of courses in both uh, EMS, Economic and Management Studies, and Law, um, and the students then also complete an LLB degree as part of the SPECOM law, and they are then also able to become admitted as legal practitioners. So that's just a bit of an overview of the LLB degree. I want to talk a little bit about how the law faculty is structured. The law faculty, and this is, I'm, I'm explaining this to you because it's important for you to understand this because we offer our various courses in the law degrees through these departments. The law faculty is comprised of four departments. These departments are the following, criminal justice and procedure, private law, mercantile and labor law, and public law and jurisprudence. So these departments cover the various areas of law that relate to, for example, criminal justice or procedure, private law, public law and jurisprudence, etc. In these, let me give you some examples, criminal justice and procedure would, would offer courses such as criminal law, um, civil procedure, the law of criminal procedure, electives such as conveyancing and so on. Uh, more of the kind of practical or practice-based mo modules will be offered in this department. In private law, there will be substantive law courses which relate to, for example, family law, the law of persons, um, and for, as well as the law of property or the law of dealing, essential courses that cover the foundations of private law and that are extremely useful in practice for those who choose to practice in this area of private law. Mercantile and labor law would offer courses such as negotiable or payment instruments as it is called, labor law and so forth. And then in public law and jurisprudence, this is where you will find your subjects such as constitutional law or, for example, um, electives in the area of human rights and constitutional law. So I'm trying to make the point that there's a very broad and general kind of exposure to the different areas of law that is offered through the various departments in the law faculty. I now want to move on to talk a little bit about what some of the employment opportunities would be. So once somebody has completed a law degree, what sort of employment opportunities would there be for you? And I, I must speak about this because as the law faculty, we have alumni that are based in various parts of the legal profession. And this is what I'd like to explain. Uh, for example, we have many people who work as prosecutors legal practitioners, attorneys or advocates working in both the private sector and NGOs, in other words, in firms as well as non-profit organizations. We have many of our alumni who work as judicial officers, judges, magistrates. We have lots of legal advisors working in various different types of corporates. We have academics, people who are lecturing or workers, and workers lecturers and researchers that at academic institutions such as myself, um, researchers, people who work in institutions, um, research bodies where they conduct research, and also obviously um, within government, state law advisors, state attorneys, parliamentary researchers or legal advisors. So the options are very, very broad for law graduates that come from the law faculty at UWC. And this is something that should be very important for a prospective law student to know what are the options that are available to law graduates that come from the law faculty. So the next question that I want to answer for you is why you should choose UWC as a law faculty. What sets UWC apart from other universities? And I want to talk about this in relation to a few particular kind of sub-topics. I mean, I want to start out by saying that 
UWC really does offer a very enabling and supportive environment for law students. Besides the actual academic curricula, the, the university is constantly engaging on improving its kind of curricula that relates to bigger social and broader academic issues that affect students. For example, the university has seen increased efforts in relation to reducing gender-based violence at the university as well as in society broadly. This is just one example. Uh, in the, similarly, the university has put lots of efforts into ensuring that we provide counselling and other support services to students. So the law faculty has a designated counsellor who can offer counselling services to students who may need it, be it related to personal matters, uh, be it related to work-related issues such as, for example, um, workload managing academically. There's also access to medical and health services for students, which are subsidised, essentially. Um, and yes, we also have very supportive lecturers, a very supportive deanery, as well as professional support staff. So it really is about moving more and more towards a student-centered approach. And this goes hand in hand with the law faculty's teaching and learning approach, which is it is about the student. It is about giving the student the best experience, giving the student the best tools in order to succeed with the degree. So the, the question is about how can we enable and support students in successfully completing and graduating with a law degree. So UWC definitely offers a lot in relation to an enabling and supportive environment for students. What's very important is to also understand UWC's history. Where do we come from? UWC has a very, very strong anti-apartheid background. UWC WC was at the forefront of fighting against apartheid. The students from our university were at the forefront of fighting against apartheid. And many of the great anti-apartheid activists actually came from UWC, either worked there or studied there. People such as Dalla Omar, for example, as well as Kada Asmal and so many other people that I could mention. The point is that we have strong roots in anti-apartheid activism and that that approach to human rights has really filtered through in many different ways. And you'll find that people, our lecturers and staff are strong supporters of human rights as well as strong supporters of particularly supporting disadvantaged students, students who come from a history of disadvantage, and to try to enable these students to succeed with their studies. It does, our student body, while we do have lots of students who come from disadvantaged backgrounds, we also have students who come from different backgrounds that are not disadvantaged. Um, but the beauty is in how we are building that diversity and growing from strength to strength in that respect, by having different types of students coming together. That in itself is preparation for the workplace or the workforce for students. There are also many different opportunities for students in terms of, for example, the Moot Society, where students can actually start learning how to argue matters in court, how to develop legal arguments um, through, Moot, so through the Moot Society. The, our law faculty students uh, enter and have been very successful in mooting both locally as well as even internationally. We have other programs such as street law, which is linked to the clinic at UWC, the legal aid clinic, which offers pro bono services to indigent clients. And street law is part of this program, and it's all about assisting people in communities, be it through different sort of drives. It could be um, soup kitchens. It could be providing young girls with sanitary towels. It could be a range of different matters that they engage in as street law. So it's really about putting back into the community as law students. And also, separate from those sort of programs, and most importantly, students can provide support through sort of giving legal advice and assistance in communities. There are also many different political student bodies that are very active at the university. And once again, Again, this goes hand in hand with UWC's political history. It's about allowing and appreciating and encouraging people to develop, to have political opinion and thought. So that is a very, very important aspect of what the experience of being a student in the law faculty could be like for you. I also want to highlight that UWC law faculty has produced some of the 
Most successful, if I could define it like that, or people who have fared very well in the legal profession, we have so many alumni who are high court judges, to mention a few, Judge Patricia Goliath, Judge Robert Henney, Judge Cecile Williams, Judge Hayat Sali Shlope, Judge Chantal Fontaine, etc., etc. So many judges are UWC alumni. We also have, on, besides the High Court, we also have Justice Muhammad Nafsa, who's at the Supreme Court of Appeal. And then the highest court of the land, the Constitutional Court, we have our very own Justice Stephen Majid. So I'm trying to say that we have many, many successful people who have really, who are now working within the highest accolades of the legal profession. And I believe that this attests to the quality of education in terms of both the curricula and beyond the curricula, in terms of how the culture at UWC has actually developed leaders within the legal profession. And I think that's a very important for prospective law students to note. I also want to mention that we also, at the law, law faculty at UWC, are increasingly producing more and more academics or students who finish or complete LLD degrees and PhDs. In other words, the highest level of a degree that can be attained. We are seeing an increase in the number of students who are graduating and this is also something that our faculty is very proud of. I would like to end off by talking a little bit about what the degree has done for me personally. Basically to bring together everything that I've just chatted about. So I completed my law degree between two th the year 2000 and 2004. I was fresh out of school. My student experience was absolutely amazing for me. It's probably some of the best years of my life. While the degree is demanding and your focus really needs to be on your studies at this stage of your life, the reality is that it was one of the most enriching experiences of my life. And in fact, my LLB undergraduate degree um, later led me to actually do a postgraduate master's degree in law. And I actually held an American law degree, not a South African one. But my degree at UWC, it actually put me in good stead to compete internationally because with my LLM degree, I could not only fare, I not only fared well, but I also actually attained one of the highest um, GPAs or highest scores for with my degree. And I was competing with students from... Um, Europe, from the US, from Asia and other parts of the country. So I do believe that it's because I had a very good foundation with my LLB degree that assisted me in faring well with an international law degree. In addition to that, um, after I completed my law degree, I was also fortunate to obtain articles at one of the biggest law firms. Um, at that time, it was called Denise Rates Attorneys. And also, my degree obviously assisted me in getting into a very big firm where I also was very fortunate to gain a lot of good experience. So the degree led to me getting into a really good firm, one of the biggest firms in the country at the time, and that gave me other opportunities. That was the start of my career. And following that, I made a decision to work in the public interest sector. In other words, I moved into law centres. I worked at places such as the Women's Legal Centre, Sonke Gender Justice and other NGOs where I did legal work, either in the form of litigation, legal advocacy, legal advice, um, training, etc. And I really also believe that the roots in at UWC in terms of the culture of human rights and social justice really played a critical role in me making a decision to dedicate a lot, most of my career to working in the public intersect and giving back to communities, indigent people and people um, and disadvantaged groups of people, which is also something I am very proud of. So my undergraduate law degree from the UWC Law Faculty has really aided me in my in my journey as a legal um, professional. And it I no doubt has links to why I'm back at the university as a lecturer at this stage. And I am very happy to be able to be back and to be able to put back into young, young people and try to ensure that you have the same experience that I had as a student and to assist you in your journey as a legal professional. And that is where I will end. I hope that you found this informative and that it assists you in making a decision as to where you would want to study your law degree. All the best with your journey and I look forward to meeting some of you once you start your studies at UWC Law Faculty. <music>